In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a MIDI chord detection algorithm using Max MSP. In this patch, all the major, minor, dominant, and diminished seven chords that I play on my MIDI keyboard are visualized in a message box with the root note, the chords type, and the unique color. You can extend this patch uh, to include inversions of these chords, different chord types, any combination of notes that you want to detect really. Let's begin. Okay, so when I'm working on an algorithm, when I'm trying to implement an algorithm in Max, especially if the algorithm is a bit complicated like chord detection, I like to take it apart in smaller steps. To me, this makes it a bit more manageable, a bit less overwhelming. So what am I trying to do here exactly? So first I want to get the chord information, right? I can write here, get chord, chord info. And this pretty much means that I want to be able to play a chord on my keyboard and then receive a list with uh, the note numbers, the MIDI note numbers that make up that chord. No matter what kind of chord I'm playing, how many voices it has, if, even if it's a single note or if I'm just mashing the keyboard, I just need the chord info as a list. So that's one. And then I want to be able to normalize the chord info. And what does this mean? I will talk a bit more about this in a few minutes, but pretty much I want to make it so I always get the same kind of data, uh, regardless of the root note, right? Even if it's a C major seven or B major seven or an A major seven, it doesn't matter. I just want to have a consistent data that does not care about the root note. As I've said, we will get to this in a few minutes. And the final step is of course the detect chord, right? If I have a normalized chord info, I can compare it with uh, other chords I have already defined in my patch. And if it detects something, it can do pretty much what it wants, right? Actually, this is where the fun really begins because after I detect the chord, I can pretty much do whatever I want. I can trigger visuals, I can trigger other musical effects, maybe I can direct a random note generator and so on but we will get there when we get there. Let's start with the first item, get chord info as a list. So I'm going to begin with creating my note in and strip note objects, of course. And also for the sake of visualization, let's create a case slider. And I also want a note out so we can hear what I'm playing. There we go. So now if I play something, we hear it very easily. Uh, I realize I'm playing on the edge of this keyboard because of my camera setup. So I'm just going to click this case slider, click this inspector button here, and I'm going to heighten this uh, low MIDI key offset. Let's make it 48. So that would be about an octave higher, I believe. There we go, that's a bit more easy to see. And I'm also going to change the display mode from monophonic to polyphonic. So we can see all the notes that I'm playing here. Okay, so now here is the problem. If I try to visualize which notes are coming in, right? Like for example, if I have a message box, which is going to report what's coming out of strip notes. Even if I'm playing chords, I am just getting singular numbers here. Now, this isn't the case, of course, obviously, all the notes are being sent uh, true note in, true strip note to case slider and note out. But the fact is, MIDI deals with single notes. It deals with one note at a time. If I'm pressing a chord, it is sending all the notes of the chord one by one, by a difference of a few milliseconds, but it's all processed one by one. And we can see this, for example, if I create prints, object and if I connect it here and then we look at the max console. The notes are there. They're all being sent just by one after the other. Luckily, there are a few objects in max that deal with uh, collecting these notes into a list. Uh, there's thresh, which will combine numbers and lists when received close together. But there is an even better object that's created exactly for this purpose, which is quick thresh. So you can see from the description is the fast chord detection objects of Max. So what happens is if I connect the outlet of strip node into the first inlet of quick trash, it's going to detect 
all the nodes coming together one after the other. And if they are close enough, if they are you know, being sent out one millisecond after the other, it's going to group them. So there you go. This is, these are the chords that I'm playing right now. And once again, I can play single notes. I can play dias, trias. I can start mashing my hands on the keyboard. It doesn't matter. It's going to get the chord information. All right, so now there is still a little thing I want to fix, which is this. Now, if I play a C major chord, for instance, say 79, 72, 76. If I play it again, 79, 76, 72, and I can, you know, play it over and over again, I'm probably going to get different variations of the same three notes. And this happens because even though I feel like I'm pressing and playing this chord at once, uh, it's probably sending the notes in a different order, depending on which one is actually pressed first, which depends on the pressure of my fingers and other details that I don't always have control over. So what I want to do now, in fact, let's not delete this, let's just keep it here. I want to sort this list of numbers. And this is where we are going to look at the most useful family of object when it comes to dealing with lists, which is the ZL family of objects, ZL or ZL. And any object that starts with ZL, ZL dot something or ZL space something deals with processing lists. If you want to do something in Max that deals with lists, the first thing you should do is just create a ZL object, right click it, go, go to the help file and look at all these tabs. There's bound to be an object that is going to help with your list processing. Now, since I'm a huge nerd and I've spent an ungodly amount of time on Max, I know the object I need is ZL sort. This is, this is going to sort the incoming list and it's going to output the sorted list. All right, so now if I play my major chord, as you can see, the order doesn't matter. It's sorted from here and it's being sent to this message box. And this, of course, extends to seven chords and you know any kind of collection of notes. Okay, so now it's time for the second step, normalize the chord info. So how do we normalize the chord info? So by normalize, I mean starting from zero. I want all of these chords to start from zero, right? Instead of 69, 73, 76, 80, I want it to be 0, 4, 7, 11, no matter which note I'm pressing. To do this, we need to do a simple mathematical operation. I want to press a chord. I want to take the root note of that chord, the lowest note, and I want to subtract all of these numbers in this list with that number, with that note. That is going to give me a list of numbers that start from zero, no matter which chord I am playing. Okay, so again, we have a list processing problem, right? I want to get this first element of uh, of my chord and again if you know if you don't know how to do this you can always type zl you can right click the help file you can look at what uh, objects are available what which objects are possible but i know again that i just need to type in zl and one this is going to get the first item in a list and here the items uh, in a list uh, start from one we start counting from one so sending this list to zl and one is going to send out the first element in the list. There we go. And again, it doesn't matter how much I mash the keyboard, it's always going to get the very first item. Now, to do mathematical operations, we do have to get a bit more creative though. I believe there does not exist a ZL object uh, that deals with uh, adding or you know mathematical operations on a list. Uh, there are ways of iterating the list and then packing it together, but I find it more complicated and I usually personally simply use vExpert. Now, the objects expert and vExpert are slightly more advanced than uh, what we are used to, what we have done so far uh, in the series of videos. But they're really useful and they're a bit more advanced because we usually deal with mathematical expressions, mathematical formulas. And in our case, V expert is going to evaluate a mathematical expression for a list. So for example, if I type in V expert dollar sign I1 plus dollar sign I2, V expert is going to be initialized with two inlets and it's going to combine the two lists coming on this inlets. 
Right, uh, and uh, in our case, you can see in the help file, we can simply give it the attribute scalar mode one, which makes it possible for uh, an input length of one being applied to each element of the other lists, basically meaning we can take a list and then we can subtract everything. Uh, we can subtract a single element from every number, every value in this list. And we can even just copy this text here, right? Instead of having dollar sign i1 times dollar sign i2, we can simply go dollar sign i1 minus dollar sign i2. So let's do a bit of piracy. Let's do a bit of stealing and plundering and just copy this and paste it here. And let's just replace this multiplication operator by the minus subtraction operator. Okay, so now I can take this, uh, the first element, I can put it in here. And then I can take my list. And I can put it in the first inlet of V expert. And I believe this should immediately work as expected. Yep, there you go. Now, if I'm playing a major chord, it doesn't matter what the root note is, we are going to start counting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight, nine, 10, and 11. This is going to be the case for all the major seventh chords I am playing. So that would be our step two. We have normalized the chord info. Not too complicated, is it? Now let's move on to well, the final step, detect chord. How do we detect the chord? How do we do something if this is major seven or minor seven or diminished seven or dominant seven? So we have to do a bit of list processing again. We want to compare this list against another list, right? So I can simply type in ZL compare. And as an argument, I can give it uh, the list I want to compare the incoming lists with. So if I type in 0, 4, 7, 11, this is going to compare the incoming uh, list with this argument. And if it's true, if in the incoming list is in the 0, 4, 7, 11, it's going to send out a 1. If it's not, it's going to send out 0. So to trigger something from this Boolean operator, this 0 or 1, true or false, I can uh, create cell one, which is going to send out a bank from its first outlet if the input is one. And then I can just do whatever I want. And now I can extend this to uh, other lists, other kinds of chords. All I have to do is compare this, I mean, copy this ZL compare object, let's say uh, three more times, and let's have a, uh, a minor seventh chord. So I believe that would be 0, 3, 7, 10. Is that right? Yes. Uh, then let's also do a dominant seventh chord. That would be 0, 4, 7, 10. And then let's do a diminished seventh chord, which would be 0, 3, 6, 9. Oops, there we go. I can just simply do it like this. And then I can make it so a message box fills in with the right chord type, right? So I can simply create these message boxes and type in M7 and uh, well, the first one could be capital and this can be a small M because it's a minor seven. And then we can have, let's see, dominant seven and we can have diminished seven. And if these message boxes get triggered, we can send these message boxes information to another message box, which will always be refreshed with the latest chord type. So I just have to create this, put it here like this. All of these can be connected here. And now, oops, there we go. Major sevens, dominant sevens, diminished seven. Um, if I play chords that do not fit anything, nothing happens. But if I play a minor seven or a major seven, it works as intended. Okay, there we go. And one more thing I'm going to do is I also want to know the, uh, the root. I want to know uh, if this is a C major seven or an A major seven or a B major seven chord. So I can do a bit more uh, coding, a bit more patching with this information, the root note, right? And what I can do is I can 
fit this, I can figure out the pitch class of this note. I can do this by using the modulo operator. So modulo 12 is going to give me a number between uh, 0 and 11, because if it goes over 11, it's going to wrap back to 0. And then C would be 0, C sharp would be 1, and just goes on like that until it's 11, and then it loops back again. So then what I can do is I can create a monster of a select object and I can give the arguments uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and I don't need 12 because it is going to wrap back around. And this creates a very big, a very huge object. So I can stretch it out a bit. There we go. And since these are all going to send out bangs if uh, the input is matching the appropriate argument, I can create a bunch of message boxes with the note names. There we go, all the note names are here. And now all I want to do is combine whatever is coming out of here with whatever is coming out of here. Right, and I can use my classic pack object, but we have a problem with the order. If I type in pack, uh, let's say, S for symbol and zero for uh, well, another S for the other symbol. The note information, the note name that is coming out is going to trigger the output, but we have not received the chord type yet. There's a problem with the order of operations here. So instead of using pack, I'm going to use combine which is going to combine multiple items in a single symbol, right? This is also useful because there is going to be no space between the note name and the chord type, which, you know, we are, us musicians are a bit more used to that, I believe. And I just have to type it, combine the amount of inlets I need, which is two, and then I can use the attribute triggers, right? And uh, trigger zero would mean uh, sending data to the first inlet would trigger output and triggers one would mean sending information to the second inlet would trigger the output and in this case that is exactly what i want right uh something seems to be not working here ah we don't have to type in the amount of inlets but we need to type in what kind of data we need so s s for two symbols and there we go we have our two inlets now so first i want to have the the note name, which means I have to connect the outlets of all of these message boxes into the first inlet of combine, which does look a bit spaghetti, but uh, what can you do? Maybe we can fix it somewhere down the line. And then I want to connect, so I cannot even see the outlet of this message box, but I want to put it here. There we go, that's what I want. And maybe we can put all of these objects to the left instead of to the right. I don't think that is going to cause any problems. Yep, this looks slightly better. And now I believe we are going to get the right kind of output. There we go, fantastic. And if I play as uh, an inversion of these chords, it doesn't work, of course. They have a uh, different composition, so I would need to add other ZL compares for uh, the different inversions or different chord types, or like I've said in the beginning, whatever you want to do, whichever kinds of chords you want to detect using this system. And from here out, you can do really whatever you want. Uh, you can maybe generate some visuals, maybe some colors or random melodies or musical ideas, depending on which chord you're playing. It's all up to you, but uh, I hope you will have fun with it. I hope this has been useful to you. And again, thank you for watching.